Hi everybody, Andrew Ains with Golf Academy here. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in today. Slightly different format today. Normally what I do is do a video on a product or uh, talk a little bit about golf instruction or whatever and um, that's the way it goes. So certainly not going away from that. I just thought it would be fun to do a different video today where it's more a talking video with, with some um, pictures imported in. But really just to uh, go back and do a little bit of response retrospective look back on how average driving distances on the US PGA has, has increased over the last uh, what am I going back here 35 years so what I did is I studied some data from 1980 all the way to 2015 all these facts and figures came off the uh, US PGA Tour website so it's all there to see if you want to check the numbers out yourself so what I did is I looked at the tour stats from 1918, 85, 90, 95, 2000, 205, 2010 and 2015. I'm going to take you through that in a little bit more detail. But let me just give you a few little facts about um, what happened during that time frame. So here's an interesting one. From 1980 to 1983, the average driving distance on the US PJ Tour increased from three yards from 257 to 260. That was the average diving distance. Um, during the next 10 years, average driving distance increased 27 yards, reaching 287 yards in 2003. And between 2003 and the end of 2015 season, average driving distances on four of the seven tours increased by 1% or 0.2 yards. Um, so some pretty interesting numbers there. So what I just want to do is give you some numbers and we're going to do a little time frame here with some pictures as they pop up. So let's go right back to 1980. Uh, now, some of you guys and girls listening to this wouldn't have been born in 1980, but I certainly was. I was around in those uh, crazy 1980s. So on, in 1980, this guy here was number one uh of tour driving distances in the u.s tour and it was dan pohl and his average for the year was 274.3 yards so remember dan would have been doing that with uh probably persimmon headed woods and the ball technology back then was by modern standards was a little bit archaic probably using something like a titleist tour bellata um, so that was him, 274.3. We move on five years, and Mr. Andy B was number one for driving distances that year. Um, 278.2 yards. So in five years, um, it only went up sort of, uh, you know, four yards. Now, Andy B was a big lad. I remember seeing him at the Open, which in 1978 was at St. Andrews. And as he finished his round, I think it was his fourth round, he picked up his ball out of the hole and he threw it from the 18th green. He threw it miles and he actually went over the road and hit the uh, rooftops of the houses. Never seen anyone throw a ball so far in my life, but he was a big lad. Um, 1990, we move into now, five years on, and Tom Pertz was number one. Um, 279.6. So in five years, we only gained one yard. So interesting numbers here, folks, isn't it? There's a pattern emerging here. This is where things start to change. We move to 1995 and John Daly arrives. John, big John. I mean, there's a few videos just to be made just about John, isn't there? So we go from 279.6 and we jump to 289, which John averaged in 1995 season. Now, there are reasons why, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this once I've told you the next figure. We go to 2000, John Daly again, number one but we have moved to 301.4 yards now. So there's been a massive change there. The reason why the numbers starting to change here is that the manufacturers were really starting to tune into something called COR. Now, for those of you who are not sure what COR means, it means, and here's a mouthful, good job I haven't had too many glasses of Chardonnay already, coefficient of restitution is what COR means, okay? Well, let me try and explain without sounding like the boffin. The technical definition of COR is the ratio of velocity out to velocity in. So it's a measure of how much energy comes out of an impact versus how much energy was put in. 
The COR has a direct influence on ball speed and distance. And in 1990s, the manufacturers were using new technology to improve COR. So they moved it from 0.78 to 0.86, which gave them these big gains. And that's why we started to see the numbers really jump from 95 to 2000. So we moved to 2005 and Scott Hend was the number one driver on tour that year. And we went up to 318.9 yards. So we picked up quite a lot of yardage again from 2000 to 2005. And then what happened is the golfing bodies, the USPJ and the RNA, decided that enough was enough. You know, the distances were becoming a little bit crazy. A lot of the golf courses were becoming, the bunkering which was in play was becoming a little bit out of place. So they decided to put a limit on the COR. So they limited the manufacturers. To producing golf clubs which had a fixed limit of 0 0.83 which means that the maximum of 83 percent of energy can be transferred at impact so that's the limit that these guys are still working to is at 0 0.83 and um, what happened next is things started to stabilize we go to 2010 and uh, robert garrigus came along and he was 315.5 so you know we actually lost nearly three yards of yardage then in the five years and then Dustin Johnson in 2015 he was 317.7 so things haven't really moved on you know since uh, that big jump from 2005 between 2000 and 2005 things have kind of stagnated a little bit in terms of driving distances so, you know, the question is, is what lies ahead, I guess, you know, what, what can the manufacturers do to uh, increase distances? I think a lot of the games personally will be made, the golf balls had a massive effect. You know, golf ball technology, again, has contributed to how much further people hit the ball off the tee. We now know with launch monitors that a certain loft launch conditions can maximise distance. And in 2015, the average club speed on the US PGA Tour was 113.2 miles an hour of a driver. The average launch angle was 10.8, and the average backspin rate was 25.99. And, you know, I spend a lot of time in my golf academy fitting people for drivers, looking at spin rates, launch angles, club speeds, setting up drivers with the right shafts and the right lofts to help them maximize distance from their club speeds. So, one technology, the launch monitors we've got now, really help us get a bit of an insight into uh, how we can maximise distance. So, I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit different, a little bit of more of an educational feel to that video, um, which is different for me, but I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed looking at reasons why these numbers grew over the years and how they levelled off. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching be interesting to get your comments and thoughts on uh, these things and I'll be back soon with some more videos. All the best. Bye bye.